G'day guys, my name is Alex, I'm a sports physiotherapist. You're probably here because you've had an ACL surgery or a meniscus surgery and your leg muscles just are not growing back. You've got a sore knee, it's swollen, the leg's not growing, you've plateaued out and you're not sure why. In this video, I'm gonna answer the why as best as I can and we're gonna do that in four parts. Because in my opinion, there's four factors that really come into play when people have plateaued out and are unable to grow their leg muscles back. Part one is going to be on pain recognition and management. Part two is going to be on exercise selection. Part three is going to be on exercise dosage, which is just so critical and important. And then part four is going to be on exercise progressions. Quite often people fall down in one of these four areas. And although it's quite simple, there is a lot of nuance to it. There is a lot of importance in getting those four sections right, because if you don't, you won't be getting the right stimulus for your muscles to grow. So guys, let's jump into part one. Pain recognition and management is really important. After an ACL surgery or a meniscus surgery or both, you've had two traumas, not just one. So you've had the first trauma of when you've heard it. And this surgery is another trauma. We have to understand that. The reason why is that you've now had two major episodes in a short period of time where your knee has undergone, one, a lot of blood in the joint, I'll be frank, two, a lot of inflammation, and three, your tissues are now no longer exercising like they were before. Tissues meaning bone, ligament, muscles, just your knee, it's gonna get weaker because you're not using it as much. So when you've had the surgery and you're coming out of the surgery, you're now having to get back into loading or strengthening up that knee so it can tolerate doing the most basic of tasks. So your pre-level of fitness may be here, but your current level of fitness after surgery is down here. And sometimes we want to do this, but we're only able to do this. Common mistakes are going for walks for too long and going for too long of a run when we finally get back to that running stage and it's really excited and we're perhaps running on a, a knee that isn't uh, optimal at the moment and we still need to put in some pre-running plyometric work which a lot of the time is skipped out on. And I'm just going to put a little link to that video here. So guys, when we have a pre-tolerance of here and our current tolerance is here and we keep making jumps above what we're able to do, that is when the knee gets sore that is when the knee gets swollen, that is when the knee gets painful and inflamed. Now, pain and inflammation is normal, but if we have too many episodes where we're up and down, where we're okay, and then we do too much because the friend invited us out for a walk, or we went for too long of a run because we felt good, and we end up in this boom-bust cycle of feeling good, did too much, pain, inflammation, swelling, rest, felt good, pain, inflammation, swelling, and then we repeat that cycle, you end up missing a lot of sessions. You can't push as hard in your sessions when you're doing squats and lunges and all, all of that because your knee is sore and therefore you're not getting your exercise in. And that's one of the big mistakes that we see all the time in rehab and it's a big reason why people aren't getting their muscle size back. There's really easy ways to monitor this is use your phone. Every single phone has an inbuilt uh, pedometer like the Samsung has a step counter. If you have a Apple Watch or if you have a, like a Garmin or a Fitbit, all of those track your steps. If you know that your knee doesn't swell up at 3,000 steps, but then you did 6,000 steps and your knee did swell up and it did get sore, then somewhere between 6,000 and 3,000 is where you're probably going to be okay. You might be you know, 3,500 or it might be 4,000, but after 4,000, you start to get pain and swelling. So that's a nice, easy way for you to monitor your steps. Other things are counting the number of squats that you're doing, counting the number of lunges that you're doing, which might seem simple, but if you're doing extras and two, if you're not recovering enough, which I'll get into in a moment, it's going to lead to pain and swelling and you missing sessions, which is definitely not good for growing muscle. So really try to understand your new knee, understand how much it can do through monitoring. And by doing that, we can keep pain and swelling as minimal as possible. And the longer we can keep your knee uh, without swelling in a very healthy, quiet state, the better your rehab is going to be. And it's going to allow you to rehab harder during your sessions. Okay, guys, let's dive into part two. Part two is exercise selection. And if you don't get your exercise selection right, you don't have a Buckley's chance of you actually 
getting your quad size back, getting your calf size back, getting your glutes back. So let's dive into my favorite exercises that I like to do for each of these parts. Just a heads up, I do have much longer videos that cover all the exercises that I like to give out to patients for this. They're listed up on the side there. So they're for quads, glutes, hammies, calves, the whole shebang, it's in there. Now we don't need to have full range of motion back before we begin strength work, that would be silly. However, we do want to have full range of motion back by the time that we get to the latter stages of our rehab and we're trying to really put some weight on a bar and get nice and strong. So I do have a full range of motion video for post-op knees, but we just want to make sure that we are focusing on getting end range extension back and getting end range flexion back, which is essentially get the leg straight and get it bending again. So have a look at that video make sure that you get your range of motion right. I take from easy to hard at the start of that video and these are just a few snippets on how I get people back to full knee range of motion. After knee surgery and very much after ACL surgery, exercise selection begins straight away as we need to make sure we don't lose muscle mass. In this phase, you're not going to gain muscle mass but you can sure as hell lose what you had prior to the surgery. You must make sure that you've got a quad exercise which is often going to be a straight leg raise. You want to make sure that you have at least one if not two glute exercises to work on hip extension and hip abduction which is the side leg raise. We then want to make sure that if possible, depending on your graft type, you've got a hamstring exercise. If it's a quad graft, you can do hamstring curls. If it's a hamstring graft, you cannot do hamstring curls. We can also work on getting our calves activated with doing some little push downs. And where possible, we could add in other exercises depending on what type of surgery you've got. But check that video for more specifics. Once you've been given the all clear from your surgeon, you're able to put weight through that leg, you're able to start doing some more intense on your feet physical therapy or physiotherapy, we want to start focusing on growing those legs back, getting them nice and strong. How we're going to do this is break up your exercises, not into individual exercises because there's so many exercises and it's like, well, which one do I pick? Let's break it down into movement patterns. So the movement patterns that exist for growing our quads is this. We've got a double leg squat variation. So anything like a front squat, an overhead squat, a back squat, they're all double leg squat exercises. We want to pick one of those. We then want to have a single leg squat variation and quite simply just doing a single leg box squat is a great way to start. We then want to also consider having a split leg squat variation as well. So this might be something like a weighted lunge. This might be something like doing a step up. We want to have a split leg variation as well because we won't get everything we need from just picking one exercise and we won't get everything we need from doing every exercise. I get my patients to start with a goblet squat. It's a great way to make sure that they get even feet distribution. When they squat down, it's even between left and right legs. It looks good. And with having a good looking squat to that 90 degrees, we can then start to load on weight as the knee allows. By doing this, we're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. We then want to add on knee extensions as an isolated exercise on top. This is just going to make sure that that quad gets really fatigued and we get that hypertrophy or muscle growth back that we need after ACL operation. From there, we then want to work on probably doing a split leg variation or a single leg squat. We want to incorporate both eventually in your programs. These aren't necessarily as good for muscle growth, but certainly very important as they're more functional to what you're going to be doing which is being in a single leg based sport especially if you're doing like football rugby soccer nfl all that sort of stuff for strengthening our hip muscles we have a similar approach we're going to have a double leg hip hinge a single leg hip hinge and this is going to be something like an rdl which is a romanian deadlift and a single leg rdl or romanian deadlift are two very common and useful options the next movement pattern for growing glutes is a hip thrust. We can do this as a double leg or a single leg. To get more range of motion and more bang for your buck, we want to get you on a bench or on a box so that as you go down, you've got more range of motion. This is going to mean that you've got a better chance of growing those glutes and making them stronger. I think using both single and double leg is important. We also want to consider with our hips is working in a side to side plane so working on the outside of our hips not just the front on plane and so to do this we're going to be using things like a side leg raise crab walks 
For our calves, we want to be considering doing a soleus press and a single leg press. We can obviously do this as a double leg and single leg option, but generally speaking, I think going for a single leg option over a double leg would be most appropriate. For our hamstrings, although they will get a lot of work with doing the hip hinges and RDLs, we want to consider doing Roman chair holds and we want to especially consider adding an exercise like the Nordic hamstring curl as the hamstring works primarily in an eccentric fashion. So it's really important that we add in eccentric exercises into your repertoire when trying to get back to sprint based sports for your ACL. So provided in your routine, we're not thinking of individual exercises, we're thinking of movement planes, it's going to become a lot clearer in your mind, hey, I actually haven't had a single leg hip hinge exercise, I haven't had a single leg calf exercise, I haven't had a eccentric hamstring exercise in my repertoire and that's something that I need to add in. And once you've done this, you've definitely taken a big step forward in addressing as to why you have reduced size in that leg. So let's now dive into our stage three. So in this section, we're talking about exercise dosage, and this is the most important section in this topic because it's the section that people get wrong most often. People will come in six months into an ACL rehab and they've just been doing three sets of 10 for the entirety of their rehab, and we're wondering why they're not getting their leg size back. Well, quite frankly, it's because we're just not doing the right amount of dosage. Dosage is super important. If you don't take the right amount of medication, you're not going to recover. If you don't give yourself the right amount of training dosage, you're not going to get the training response that you want. In this case, obviously, we are after hypertrophy or muscle growth so that we can get your leg back to the same size. A really basic way of getting proper exercise sets and reps is a linear progression or linear periodization. So I think for the majority of people, just picking a basic linear progression is gonna be a great place to start. Something along the lines of 12 to 15 reps for three to four sets. And we do that for maybe two to three weeks. And then we drop it down to 12 to 10 reps for three to four sets. And then it might be 10 to eight reps for three to four sets. And then six reps and then five reps. And then we go back to the start. When you go back to the start, Whatever weight that you did the first time around will now be heavier and therefore you're stronger. So whatever you did 12 to 15 reps for, that weight is now more. And then whatever you did at 10 to 12 reps, that weight is now more. So we at least know that you're getting stronger. You're adapting to that new stimulus and dosage. And if you aren't, it just means we're not training as hard as we should. And we just increase the weight or we increase the amount of repetitions, we just increase some form of the exercise to make it harder. This will increase the demand and mean that your muscles are working harder. I just wanna stress that this principle is simple, but its execution is difficult because people quite often in my experience don't have the knowledge on or the confidence with progressing. Maybe they don't have a spotter or maybe their technique isn't as good. So this might be if you can't squat very well in terms of the front squat. So to add in more weight, you can't from a, a confidence standpoint. Well, you might have to have two exercises. You might have to do squats at the weight that you can do competently and confidently. And then you get the strength and growth side of things by doing a double leg leg press to get that stimulation for that muscle growth. The second factor that I think is extremely important is the intensity. And this ties into the weights as well. Using the Borg scale or the RPE scale, this stands for rate of perceived exertion. When we're doing our weights training, often we wanna be between six on the scale up to about an eight or even a nine. So when doing high reps, it's still going to be a difficult task, but you're probably going to be somewhere in the vicinity of a six or a seven. When you get to the back end of a program, if you're following that linear periodization and you're getting down to five or six reps for the entire set, you're going to be working really, really hard and you're probably in the vicinity of a seven to a nine. This will guarantee that you're working quite hard and that you're ensuring that muscle growth. The only caveat here is that if you have a lot of pain and knee swelling, it's going to make your score go up really quickly because it's really hard to push through a lot of pain. So this is why you need to make sure that you have that quiet knee that we mentioned in stage one. We can't be having your knee swell up all the time because you'll be fatiguing because of pain as opposed to fatiguing because of muscle fatigue. 
Now I want you to take a really close look at this diagram and don't freak out, I'll explain it quite simply. So what we have is performance on the left and we have time on the right and this is the fatigue curve. Now our initial level, the dotted line, refers to your current level or ability. Now, when we train, we're going to get fatigued, so our actual ability or our performance level is going to drop because our muscles are sore and tired, and if I had to train twice in the one day, the second time that I have to train, I'm nowhere near going to be as good as the first time that I trained that day. Now, what happens is our body then compensates through recovery, and we achieve a new level of performance, meaning that when I've had enough rest, when I go back to the gym, I'll, I'll be able to do more than I was able to do the first day that I went because my body has now adapted. For this adaptation to occur, we need sufficient recovery. In my experience, the majority of people are just under training and they're not hitting the number of sets required to get muscle growth in their leg. And for these people, they just need to start following that linear periodization that we've already spoken about in this video. Now, there are some people that are just training too much. So let's dive into that. Now, one of the most common reasons why people aren't getting appropriate leg growth is that they're training their legs three times a day or they're not having any days off between their leg sessions. Now, at the start of your rehab, you are doing motor control. So you're doing leg raises multiple times a day, hundreds of reps a week, just to get that muscle to switch back on. Once you're out of that phase, you should be doing strength-based training like you would if you were in a gym regularly. You would never do bench press seven days a week. You need to be doing it two, maybe three times a week and having sufficient recovery in the middle and your ACL rehab or your knee rehab is no different. We want to be training our quads in a strength and muscle growth way only two to three times a week with sufficient periods of recovery, which will be between 48 to 72 hours after each session to get that sufficient recovery so that we can achieve that new performance level or that new adaptation to your training. What people are doing is they're training every day, fatiguing their quads out, and they're not actually allowing their muscles to adapt, recover, and grow, whereas it would if it did have sufficient enough recovery. So what you'll see in this third diagram is that we keep getting a bit weaker, a bit weaker, a bit weaker, because we don't give ourselves sufficient recovery. So the key message here is have a plan, have that linear periodization in place. It works for a lot of people. That's usually what I train on on a day-to-day -day basis. So we start off at 15, work our way down to five, and then we go back up to the start again, and that starting weight is heavier, and therefore I know I'm getting stronger. The second thing is have some way of monitoring how you're going in your sessions. Are you training hard? And that's where that RPE scale can come into it. At the start of your training, you might be towards a six. By the end of that training block, that linear periodization block, you're gonna be up around the eight or nine. And thirdly, make sure you're getting sufficient recovery, make sure you're eating well, make sure you're having up to 72 hours rest in between sessions. We only really need to be stimulating one muscle group, such as the quads, for about 12 to 20 sets per week, which will be about two to three training sessions per week. Anything more than that, for the most part, is going to be overkill. It's different if you are at the start of your rehab and your quads aren't switching on at all. You do need to do lots of reps because we're trying to get the brain connecting with the quad to get it to turn on. But if you're not in that phase, you do not need to train like that anymore. That is wrong, you need to stop. So finally, this last section, exercise progressions, is a really easy and quick section because I've already done the videos on them in regards to ACLs. They're the same ones that I posted at the start of the video, so you can check out the links that are in the bottom. Essentially, I just want to make this one quick message. If you're still doing things like straight leg raises when you could actually be doing squats or front squats or single leg squats or split squats, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you haven't added weight due to fear, so if you're not doing... Um, back squats with a barbell, you're not progressively adding on more weight as time goes on during your rehab, this is not progressing. You need to be making sure that in your sets and reps, in the weight that's on the barbell, as each week goes past, you've got a way of making the exercise harder. This can be changing the exercise, so from a straight leg raise into a goblet squat, into a single leg goblet squat, or a straight leg raise into a goblet squat, into a front squat. It's important that you do this to get the progressive overload, 
to get the increased stimulation, to get the right dose so that you get your muscle size back, you get your strength back after your ACL rehab. If all you're doing is body weight back squats and you're at six months down the track in your ACL rehab, I just think that you, you need to look at the reasons why and I think a lot of the time it, it's confidence and you haven't been educated in the way that you need to and this is not an attack this is just the way that I see a lot of my patients come in is that for some reason they haven't progressed themselves the way they need to and they're sticking with the safe exercises and if we want you to get your muscle size back if you want to get back to playing sport we need to progress you the exercises need to get harder and this goes for all different body parts. So for your glutes, you might start off with a body weight bridge and eventually we're doing a 100 kilo double leg hip thruster, for example. And these need to happen for carbs, hamstrings, etc. These are core principles that should be in any rehab program, any prehab program, meaning how you get ready for surgery in the first place. And it's how you would just grow your muscles or get stronger in the gym even without injury. If you're trying to get stronger for bench press, you're going to have the same um, exercise selection, you're going to have an appropriate dosage, and you're going to have an appropriate progression. If you don't have these things, you will plateau, you will not get the results that you're after. Please would appreciate you guys saving and sending, so save the video or follow for more and then send it on to someone else that you think needs it. Because I just think this information just needs to get out there. And um, I just really want to help as much as I can. I really hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in another video. And um, I'll see you soon. Bye.